Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting video 25.3 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This video is on aortocoronary dissections. Aortocoronary dissections are a subtype of the coronary dissections, which in turn are one of the causes of acute vessel closure that might lead to hypotension, myocardial infarction, and arrhythmias. These are some examples. This is an example of an aortocoronary dissection happening when contrast was injected through a deeply seated guide catheter extension. And this is a more impressive one at the end of CTO-PCI with contrast entering into the subaortic plane and externing up in the ascending aorta. What can cause aortocoronary dissections? The number one reason is forceful contrast injection when there is pressure dampening. Aggressive guide catheters and deep coronary engagement can also predispose, as can uh, aggressive predilatation of the coronary ostium or balloon rupture at the aortocoronary ostium. Also, sometimes the retrograde wires during retrograde CTO PCI might go into the subaortic tissue and cause a localized hematoma, or the same can happen with undergrade attempts for crossing aortoosteal CTOs. How to prevent it? Number one rule is to avoid injections when there is pressure dampening. It is important to repeat this again and again because it's a critical rule for angiography and PCI. There should never be contrast injection with pressure dampening because bad complications such as, such as aortocoronary dissection can occur. This is especially true when aggressive guides like the ambulance left are used and when guide extensions are intubated deeply into the coronary vessels. Also, avoid aggressive wire manipulations in the retrograde direction close to the aortic ostium. What to do if an aortocoronary dissection occurs? The first and most important step, perhaps, is to stop injecting. Injection of contrast can actually enlarge the aortocoronary dissection and make it worse. So, stopping injection is the most important step sounds obvious, but sometimes due to the stress and the nervousness of having a complication and trying to understand better what's happening, many operators might continue injecting with catastrophic consequences. The next step is to place a stent into the aorta, ideally use IVUS to confirm that the stent covers the ostium and it's well expanded, and then TE or CT can be used to monitor the extent and the size of the hematoma in the aortic wall. There are some cases that illustrate those examples. This is a small aortocoronary dissection at the end of an RCA CTO PCI. This was done with an amplatz guide catheter, and the wire had been pulled back at this point. To avoid uh, extending the dissection, what was decided to do is to remove the amplatz guide and then try to wire with um, a JR4 guide catheter and then eventually using the JR4 and the workhorse wire that was looped, uh, we were able to wire through the previously placed stents. And this was easier to do because there were already stents almost all the way to the ostium. Then an additional stent was placed covering all the way to the aorta, protruding about two millimeters into the aorta. The stent was deployed. And then intravascular ultrasound was used. And this is critical for all aortoosteal lesions, but especially so if there is aortocoronary dissection, because IVUS can confirm that the stent is actually extending all the way into the aorta, which is critical for covering the aortocoronary dissection. We can see here the stent struts are all the way into the aorta, therefore the ostium has been covered. This is another case, also RCA-CTO. We're essentially done taking final pictures, but unfortunately, by doing so, Again, with an amplatz guide catheter and with pressure dampening, there is both uh, dissection going down, even though we had uh, stents uh, placed before, but also there is an aortocoronary dissection propagating back into the aortic cusp. Once again, the therapy was to stop injecting. The amplatz guide was disengaged while maintaining wire position, and that can be tricky sometimes because by pulling back the guide, the wire may come out as well. But fortunately, in this case, we're able to deliver the stent first, then carefully back the guide out, then deploy the stent covering the ostium of the vessel. Then an osteal flash balloon, which is a balloon that flares the aortoosteal stents, was used. 
to flare the ostium of the vessel. And uh, this provided a nice result. As you can see, we're injecting very cautiously at this point with the guide being disengaged essentially from the vessel ostium. There was no treatment done for the most distal dissection. The patient was brought back several weeks later. The concern and the fear for the aortocoronary dissections is to have this, which is extension of the dissection all the way down to the ascending aorta and potentially even the descending aorta because that might need surgery. In most cases, if this is diagnosed early, injections are stopped, the dissection, the orthocoronary dissection heals over time between 24 hours, one month and six months, there's a sensor resolution of the dissection. So in summary, the key way for preventing aortocoronary dissections is to not inject if there's pressure dampening. If it occurs, the most important thing is to stop injecting, then place a stand, use IVOS to confirm the stand is doing well, and then use TE or CT to severely monitor the aortocoronary dissection size. Thank you.